Hi guys, Patty here with a tool time video. Um, I thought it'd be cool to um, go over some of the things I have in my craft space, some of the tools I use, um, let you know which ones I use a lot, which ones I not so much. Um, and so yeah, let's get right into it. Um, the things that I find most important in my tools um, when crafting are my scissors and my glue gun. Um, I think scissors are so important. The right kind of scissors for each project are so important. Like if you're um, cutting through a, like a heavy material like cardstock or chipboard, a heavy cardstock or a heavy chipboard, then you want to have a certain pair of scissors for that. If you're cutting through something that has glue or tape on it, you want to have the right scissors for that. Um, you want to have scissors for fussy cutting so I think that scissors are one of the most important if not the most important tool in my craft space and I wanted to share with you the ones that I use the most um, I have this pair and then I have the orange traditional scissors that we see at everybody's um, in everybody's craft space these are awesome because they're heavy duty so this is what I use when I'm cutting through chipboard or cardstock or anything heavy um, I like to use my cereal boxes for um, mini albums and so I will use a big pair of scissors like this to cut through those heavy materials um, and these aren't expensive at all and they're just really convenient and heavy duty for cutting through things like that um, these are the tools I use, the scissors I use for, um, what do you call it, fussy cutting. They are a good size to kind of maneuver. It's not so big and awkward like these. Um, they're really sharp, so I love to use these for fussy cutting. Um, and I try really hard not to cut through glue or tape with these. Um, and not to cut through anything that's going to dull them or damage them in any way. So I really try hard to, and it's impossible, sometimes you're in a hurry and you're like, oh, I'll just do it this one time. And you cut through something with glue. But um, but yeah, I try, I'm really conscious about that, about taking care of them. And I try really hard not to, not to damage them. Um, then these I picked up on um, Wish, I believe. And I had seen some scissors that Martha Stewart made for tassel making. I, and you can use them for other things. Like I've also used these for um, making those cray paper garlands. Um, so you can use this these for that as well to make them kind of fuzzy. Um, and so I picked these up on Wish because I couldn't find the Martha Stewart ones and they have come in handy they are so cute so easy to use to make tassels i do use my die more than i use these scissors um but it's easier to use these than the die because you just grab them and cut through you know the paper and it creates the tassel it's really fast it's something you don't really need um you can do without but it is also something that's very convenient to have so if you can um, I would recommend having these in your stash. There are, these are my, um, my cut through glue and tape scissors and they kind of stick together. They have, you can see they have some of that foam square on them. Um, I started out using these for fussy cutting and they became dull. So then I just started using them to cut through tape. Um, I have these that I found at Tuesday morning and they were so awkward to use at the beginning but now I really like them um, because you can get into those hard to reach places so um, these are a great scissor to have as well and then there are tons and tons of these um, paper edge scissors these are the two that I use the most it's the pinking and the scallop um, I like to use these for rosettes, um, for making bag toppers, for lots of things like that. I mean, these the possibilities are endless, but these are the two shapes that I use the most. Um, and then recently I started using these for wire wrapping beads. Um, 
I've had these in my stash for a while because I used to uh, make jewelry a really really long time ago like over 10 years ago <laughs> um, and these were the only ones that I found that I had left so then I also grabbed these from my husband's toolbox um, and so these have come in handy for cutting um, I like that these are magnet so when you put like let's say a jump ring in it it won't fall off of it because they have a magnet on there um, so I haven't given these back to him but if you ever receive any of my wire wrapped beads you will know why they're not so perfect <laughs> these are the only two tools that I have um, the only two pliers I use when wire wrapping my beads um, so I definitely need to pick up a, <clears throat> excuse me a tool set for that and then these are um, what are they called scoring tools and um, Oh my gosh, I can't think of the word, but you know what I mean. <laughs> These are blades. Um, gosh, I can't think of the word. These I picked up at Dollar Tree. Um, they are really nice to have on hand, especially when you're cutting through like poster board or something like that. It's um, it's a good idea to have some of these on hand. These come in a pack of three or four from Dollar Tree. Um, and I just love having these on hand. I also picked up this one at Dollar Tree. It comes with different um, style blades and so you can just remove this and change those out. Um, so this is a nice and expensive X-Acto blade. There you go. Um, thanks for sending that to me. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is um, a good one to have on hand because you can change out the blade to um, whatever you need that best fits whatever project you're working on. I also picked these up recently at um, Dollar Tree. These right here I use so much because I use them to um, remove glue from my projects and I also use them to um, take out all the little pieces of die cuts that don't come out in the die cutting machine. So this little pick comes in handy. It really is a great tool to have in your craft space. I also like to use this tip to remove excess glue. Um, this is a stylus. It's a scoring tool um, or I use it as a scoring tool. It has a small edge on this side, a bigger edge on this side. Um, I've also used it to roll flowers so it's not big enough but it does do the job. It does, it does help you to roll those flowers um, and then this is just a scoring tool that comes with some that's uh, comes with the uh, cutting boards and tr paper trimmers. Um, so those are the scissors that I like to keep on my desk and a few other items that I use quite often. And scissors are always getting lost in the craft room. I sometimes stick them in the iris bins when I stick my scrap pieces of paper in them and then I forget where I put them. Um, and or they get lost under a pile of paper and so it's important to always have a good pair of scissors around. Uh, moving right along, the second thing that I absolutely find very important is um, adhesive and um, so glue guns and tape runners and all those things um, are important. So Let's start with the ATG gun. This is an advanced tape glider or ATG uh, glider. And so um, what it is, is you put your double-sided tape in here and then you just glide it on your projects and the tapes, you know, it, it sticks on your project. Um, it's a little top heavy and it's also one of those tools that you have to refill constantly. Um, so I don't pull it out and use it as much as I'd like to. It's something I wouldn't recommend that you invest in. Um, I have seen that YouTubers that do tutorials, this is so convenient to have if you're doing tutorials because you can, you know, just glide this on. It's it's not messy and it's just, it, it's an easy 
tool to have if you're doing a tutorial but if you're not doing tutorials in your craft space then um, I don't really see a need for it it's just one of those tools that's nice to have um, but yeah this is something I wouldn't recommend that you go out and get right away um, like I said you have to make sure to have refills on hand and it's happened to me so many times that I've run out and then I don't have a refill and so um, that's one of the issues with this and I guess if you're more organized too um, it would be a good tool as long as you make sure that you always have you know the refills um, I also picked up these sticky thumb uh, double-sided dispensers from Tuesday morning these are refillable and they're a great size to have so these are nice to have as well but um, but yeah, I, I prefer using just the orange tape or these this double-sided tape from Dollar Tree. I don't think it's very necessary to have an actual uh, runner, tape runner. Um, and then these are my glue guns. Recently, I watched my friend Christian, um, or Christian, I'm sorry, have a live and she had in her live, she was using her glue gun and it was a Sherbonder glue gun and I fell in love with that glue gun. I loved the tip. I saw how um, easy it was and how like not messy because it's a very thin layer of hot glue. And so immediately I was like, wait a minute, where did you get that? Let me know where you got that. I want one and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't even know like all the cool features on it. I just saw how it, you know, how she used it on her projects, how the glue was coming out. and. I just fell in love with it because of that because at the time this is the glue gun I had um, it's an ad tech two temp glue gun and it's a really good glue gun because it has two temps I loved that so much um, so you have the the high temp and the low temp and when you put it on low temp the great feature about that is that let's say you're making those cray paper rosettes you're not gonna burn your fingers um, if it's on the low temp side so that's a great feature to look for in your glue gun um, for it to have the two temperatures but this one just has so much more features um well first of all it comes with this little stand or holder or charging dock <laughs> it does so many things um, and it has this little silicone pad in the front to catch any dripping glue um, this is where you would charge like i have glue all over it this is where you would charge um, this is where you put the cord if you want to use it as a cordless glue gun you can also you uh, plug in the cord here um, it has an on off button it has an indicator light it has these little wings right here or fins that if you put it down it's gonna keep the tip down and keep that hot glue running downward and so it's not going to go back and clog up your glue gun it has this insulated tip to prevent burns um, and this tip is what I just loved the most um, this fine tip I think that that helps keep your projects from getting so messy and getting glue all over the place I'm a messy crafter so this is something that um, I thought would help me not be so messy it is only high temp it doesn't have two temps um, but high temp if I had to choose between high and low I would definitely choose high because it gets so hot it allows you time to move it doesn't dry so quickly so it allows you time to move whatever it is that you're adhering I recently picked this up like I said after watching Christians um, live and when I went to the site to pick this up I saw that they had this available absolutely loved this color I have a lot of hot pink in my craft space and so I thought it was just so cute and so pretty and so I wanted this but it was out of stock so because I'm so impatient I went ahead and bought the black one but then a few weeks later this came back in stock and I a hundred percent did not need it but I a hundred percent bought it because of the pink on it it's called the Lynn Lily um, it is designed by craft box girls and she's um she's an account i follow on instagram and so it's just really really cute girly glue gun it has all those nice features that sherbonder cordless glue guns have this these two are the mini um so they are totally not necessary to have both um but i would totally recommend 
investing in one of these or um, even picking up one of these with the two temp um, option. So those are glue guns. Let me move this out of the way. Moving right along, these are staplers that I have on my desk. This one holds colored staples. This one holds regular staples. I also have a tiny attacher that I picked up at Tuesday morning. Um, and when it had staples, I used it so much. So I would totally recommend getting one of those. But do your research. Make sure that the staples that fill it are easily available to you. Um, I have not been able to find staples that fit my uh, mini attacher. I've purchased a few and none of them fit. They're either too big or too small. So um, if any of you out there know where I can get staples that fit the, the Tuesday morning one, let me know please. Um, but yeah, I haven't been able to um, to find the, um, the staples. And so definitely staplers are an amazing tool to have in your craft room. I love having a tape dispenser. It's like having an extra set of hands when you are packaging your, um, your crafts items for Happy Meal and things like that. Um, so I would definitely recommend having a tape dispenser on hand. Um, this is another Dollar Tree tool that I have that I absolutely love. It's a glue eraser and basically what it does is it erases glue it takes it off of like let's say you have glue on your paper you just rub it with this and it'll remove that excess glue from the paper um, so these are really good to have on hand as well especially for someone like me who likes to use liquid glue um, I sometimes get that on things and so once it dries and if it's still visible you can just use this to kind of take it off gently use this to take it off the paper so that's a great tool to have um, I recently picked this up I saw this in one of Adriana Alvarez's posts she had some sequence mix on it and I thought it was just so adorable so what it does is you pour your sequence glitter um, things like that in here and then you pour them into your project. I have found that it's not so easy to get those sequence mixes through here. Um, so what I really like it for is for cleanups. So let's say you have um, you know a mess on your desk you're gonna scoop it up into here and then you know pour it back into the into the containers so this has come in handy for cleanups it hasn't been so useful for pouring sequence mixes into projects um, it probably does work much better with glitter because it's a small spout so um, it'll it'll go through that easier um, but yeah I love this for cleanups and speaking of cleanups, this is another cute tool to have for cleanups. Um, this was gifted to me and I like to use it to clean off my keyboard. Sometimes I get, um, excuse me, glitter or um, glue or sometimes even sequence mixes on my keyboard and this little vacuum will just suck that all up off of your keyboard. So this is a really good um, tool to have if you are a messy crafter like me <laughs> um, okay so let's move on to this basket I love to have packing tape this is more of an adhesive type thing and not a tool but a great thing to have in your craft space at all times um, these are like having a second hand as well um, or second set of hands these are just clips from Dollar Tree but let's say you're gluing something you need to hold it in place you're using wet glue you just put this on it and it's going to hold it for you in place so these are awesome to have um, in your and you can use any type of clip but these are a dollar and i believe they come in a set of six and then this is a great tool to have as well when you're using a high temp glue gun i haven't gotten used to wearing it all the time it kind of feels like it's in the way and awkward but I do hope to keep using it to get used to using it because it does help um, save your fingertips from burns um, and again these are from Dollar Tree as well that's a great little tool to have they come in a pack of three and it's such a cute color it's a hot pink color so so cute so those are awesome to have in your craft stash and not too expensive um, if you're a stamper Dollar Tree has these awesome acrylic 
um, blocks as well. And I love to use these. I also have the Recollections um, acrylic blocks from Michaels. Um, I don't pull those out as much. There's, I think, three in the pack. There's a big, medium, and a small one. But I tend to use these more. I guess because they were a dollar, I don't feel like they're so fragile. I don't know, but I tend to use these more than the other ones. And um, so, yeah, this is another thing from Dollar Tree, another craft item from Dollar Tree that I would recommend you use, especially if you are a stamper. Um, if you use stamps, those are cool. This is a an ink dauber. I used this so much that I um, the little piece down here came off of it. Um, I don't know if mine was just defective or if it was <laughs> that I did use it so much. Um, I use this to ink edges on many albums and things like that. Um, this is so easy to hold and to, you know, maneuver on your, on your edges. Um, I don't know. I really like this a lot. I also have the finger daubers, but those are, are really small and it, it just seems like I would recommend this instead. So I absolutely love this one right here. And again, that is only if you are doing stamps, um, if you use stamps in your craft room. So these are the punches that I use all the time. Um, I have cases and drawers of punches, but these are the ones, my go-tos, these are the ones that I use all the time. Um, so I wanted to share that with you. And I actually do keep them separate because I do use them all the time. So first of all, um, up first is this Heidi Swap Memory Dex Punch. I got this, I bought this from Brenda Zavala um, over a year ago. And it is a game changer, guys. If you don't have a die, um, this is the way to go. I would recommend getting this um, before the, the actual dies. And the only reason is that you can turn anything into a Memory Dex card with this punch. And with the dies, you're only going to get the shape that that comes in the dies. So this is something I use a lot for creating memory dex cards. Um, and like I said, you can just um, you can turn anything into a memory dex with this punch. Total game changer. I would totally 100% recommend that. These are circle punches that I use all the time. Um, I use them most for when I'm making rosettes. I cut out the little circles to use them as the centers of the rosettes. Um, I picked this one up so that I could make that tissue paper um, confetti. This is a great size for that. It's a 5 8 inch um, circle punch. So yeah, these two I use a lot. And then this um, I also use to create little notches and pockets like a half moon notch. I just put it, put the paper in halfway, um, like halfway down the 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 punch right here and then it'll create that little half moon notch so definitely recommend these two I absolutely use these all the time in my craft space um, this is something I picked up before I picked up the eyelet punch I would use this um, it's a circle reinforcer or um, hole punch reinforcer and what it does is just help protect your your hole punches and paper from tearing um, especially in things like a tag flip if you're going to be flipping it um, it could cause that paper to tear so this is just a reinforcer it helps protect that punch um, I, like I said I did pick this up before I picked up my eyelet um, punch and so of course if you insert an eyelet you don't need a whole reinforcer because that eyelet is going to protect the paper but anyhow, this is something that I use a lot for tag flips and things like that. Um, it's very convenient to have. It's easy to use. The, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this brand. It lifts up right here so that you can empty it. Um, and so this feature right here sometimes gets stuck. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend this brand, but I would recommend that you have a whole reinforcer punch in your stash. Um, and then this is another punch that I used so much. It is a corner rounder um, punch. And I used it so much that I actually broke it. When it cracked is when I went ahead and invested in this one. Um, but 
I think I got this at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. It wasn't very expensive. Um, and so you just insert your paper right here, punch down, and it rounds that those edges. But if you can see right here, I kind of cracked it. So when I would push down, it wouldn't, for some reason, um, work too well. It would get stuck a lot. So that's when I went ahead and invested in these. But um, yeah, definitely have those corner rounders it really does make your projects look so different, especially when you're matting something. Um, if you're matting a page on a flip book or embellishment book or even a layout, um, and you round those corners, it just makes your project look so nice. It gives it a really nice um, finish. So this is the um, Crocodile Corner Chomper. It basically is the same thing. It just rounds those edges. It has, um, the quarter inch and the half inch and so um, I use this a lot as well um, it's easy to put any paper in there and um, you know easy to get it in those grooves um, so yeah this is a great tool to have on hand as well um, and then I also have this one and this one punches um, eyelets and snaps and then it also has these little hole punches on the side. It has this one and this smaller one over here. And then these are adjustable. You just flip them around um, to fit whatever size of eyelet or snap that you are punching. So this is also a great, great tool to have on hand. I use this a lot with eyelets. I haven't started with the whole um, snap um, <laughs> trend or craze yet, but I totally want to, and I love Wandy Sweet's um, snap tool. She has like a little pink case one, so I recommend you checking that out and getting the Wandy Sweet's um, uh, snap tool. It's so, so cute. So again, these I always, always use. I recommend you having any of these items in your craft space. They're totally worth the, the money and the effort, and yeah, I, I love these a lot. Um, and use them a lot. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, so these tools right here are things that I don't use a lot. Um, things that I wish I would have used uh, the money <laughs> on something different. Um, yeah, because I don't really use these. So the money that I invested in these items, I wish I would have invested in something else. But live and learn. <laughs> so... Um, these are pom-pom makers. They come in a set of three. You have a um, medium one that I'm missing. It's probably in a yarn drawer somewhere. Um, so these just help you create pom-poms. There's a lot of tutorials and videos out there for you to watch to see how they work, but it's really simple. Um, I don't really use this a lot. I wouldn't recommend picking it up. Um, there are ways to make pom-poms without these tools. And so, yeah, this is one of the things that I don't really use a lot. If you must have these, I would suggest you order them from HSN. They have this awesome pack that has these three pom-pom makers, um, the We Are Memory Keepers Bow Loom and the Tassel Loom. And then it also has a pair of detailed scissors and it's like $22 for um, those three tools and the scissors. So I think that's a good price if you are going to pick them up. But yeah, this is something that I wouldn't really recommend you pick up. I don't really use them too much. Um, this is a heat tool. I picked this up because I wanted to do embossing or, you know, where you do the stamps, you, um, put some embossing powder over the stamps and then you, um, heat it up and it brings your stamps to a whole nother level. And um, so it is really cute for that. I did do that for a while. And it's also great for when you're doing mixed media. I, and I found this one at Tuesday morning. It wasn't that expensive. Um, but yeah, when you're doing mixed media, like on a scrapbook layout or something like that, and you don't want to wait, you can just dry it up with this. And um, so it's a great for that. Um, I don't do a lot of mixed media and I don't do a lot of embossing with my stamps, so I don't really use this very much. Um, yeah, and so, um, it, especially if you're just starting out, this isn't a tool that I would invest in right off the bat. Like, 
I would totally suggest you investing in scissors, a glue gun, and a, a paper trimmer. Um, those are my top three. But um, but yeah, this is one of those tools that I don't really use. This is another one of those tools I don't really use. This is the fuse tool, and it's designed to fuse photo sleeves together. Um, so what it does is it heats up and then you just run this over the photo sleeve and it seals that photo sleeve. It's great for shakers, um, which is why I purchased it. It does get really, really hot um, and you do have to wait for it to heat up. So, and I found that a lot of times I wouldn't, um, I don't know if I wasn't being patient enough and waiting for it to heat up enough, but my shaker sleeves would sometimes open up. Um, so I just found it easier to either glue, use glue, or to use my sewing machine to create shakers. Um, so I don't really pull this out too much. This thing I never use. I saw Tony uh, from Craft Purge show this, um, share this, and I thought it was so cool. And she made the cutest little labels. Um, and you can use different color of tapes. Um, of labels it has these little discs are removable so it has like the uppercase letters as well there's different ones you can use it has a lot of cute um, discs that you can change out um, it's a cute color and so it was just so tempting to get it was something I thought I really needed and I've never used um, so yeah I wouldn't recommend spending money on this and again especially if you're just starting to build your stash and just starting to get those tools that you really need this is one of the things I wouldn't um, spend money on at all um, so Recently, I picked up the Stitch Happy Pin. I thought it would be such a good tool to have to stitch my name onto things like handmade by and then, you know, have my stitched name on it. Um, but it's kind of big and tedious to use. So again, this is one of those things I wouldn't really recommend. If you don't have a sewing machine, it's totally worth the effort because you can do, you know, designs like this on your ephemera and on your projects. But if you have a sewing machine or even if you just have a needle and thread, I think that would be more convenient than this. Um, so do your research, look into it, see if it's something that you would like. I don't recommend it and it's not something that I have even used. I used it just to create a little um, review video on it, but I haven't used it since it's still in the box. Um, and then these are two punches that I picked up at Tuesday morning that, again, I would not recommend. This is a candy box punch board. And so this is what it creates, a candy box that looks like that. This is the result when you cut it on paper. And then, of course, you just fold it along the lines and create that candy box. Again, it was not very expensive. It was like 6 or $7 at Tuesday morning. But it's something I don't really use, so I... I wouldn't recommend picking this up. This is a pinwheel punch board. Found this at Tuesday morning as well. It makes these different size um, pinwheels right here. This is what the final result looks like. So it'll look something like this. It tells you where to line it up. Um, and again, this is one of those tools that's just collecting dust in my craft room. Um, it's not something that I use very much. So these are all tools that I would recommend not purchasing um yeah these are things that i definitely don't use very often okay guys and now we are getting into we're almost to the end if you're still with me thank you so much for still being here um these are tools some of these i really really use a lot okay so this let's start with a smaller one this is the mini envelope punch board i use this for um, making mini envelopes obviously for embellishments um is it necessary? Absolutely not. If you find it at Tuesday morning, I recommend um, that if you feel that you really, really need it, you pick it up from there because it is a very good price. I can't remember what it was, but I know it wasn't very expensive. Um, it was pretty reasonable. So yeah, I don't really use this a lot. When I do use it, it is obviously for making embellishments, but it's something I don't very, use too much. And it's so cute because it comes with this little um, scoring tool. This is something I don't recommend you pick up. It's a frame punch board. I don't really use this at all. You can make frames 
without this punch board. I actually have a die that I recently received from Coco and Reno and I use that so much more than I have ever used this punch board. I love that die, you should check it out. It's in one of my previous videos. Um, but yeah, this punch board, one of those items that I don't use and that I don't recommend that you pick up. Um, this is a Fiskars paper trimmer. I believe that you can change out these blades and it can also be used as a scoring tool. Um, I don't really use this too much either. I picked this up a, a while back and yeah, I don't really use this too much, but it is a great tool to have on hand. Um, these two I use all the time. So rather than getting the mini envelope punch board, I would suggest buying this one first. This is multifunctional. There are so many videos out there that show you how to do bows and different projects with it, little tabs. Um, so it's definitely multifunctional. There's a lot of use that you can get out of this. It makes envelopes, bows, and um, gift boxes. I use this one a lot. Um, so definitely this is one of my top um, ones, top punch boards to, to buy. Um, I absolutely love this one, 100% recommend. And then this I use almost in every single project because of this paper trimmer right here and because of this um, ruler along the edge. It opens up like this. I'm sure you've seen them before. It's a scoring um, board and paper trimmer. So this 100% recommend. Um, this is a We Are Memory Keepers, but there's different um, brands out there. And I don't think that one brand is better than the other. They all serve the same um, or have the same outcome. So it just depends on which you prefer. Some of them have this on this side. Some of them have it on the left side. It just depends on what your preference is. But definitely 100% again um, recommend having one of these in your stash. Totally would recommend investing in one of these. They're not too, they're pretty reasonable. Um, but yeah, this, this paper trimmer and this ruler right here helps so much when I'm doing projects and then of course you use it for scoring. Moving right along to these bigger tools, this is a laminator that I picked up. It's a scotch laminator that I picked up at Walmart a uh, while back. I picked this up when Sabrina Ann was laminating those TN covers. I was obsessed with those TNs. I loved making them. I used to include them in all of my Happy Mail. I absolutely loved them so much. Um, and then uh, Sabrina introduced us in one of her videos to Bona, um, or at least that's where I found out about Bona, and Bona was doing the same thing, laminating her TNs, and she was making these little shaker pockets and bookmarks and things like that. So I went and I picked this up, and yeah, I don't really use it. <laughs> so it's a great tool to have on hand. It's come in hand um, for like the kids' um, projects and stuff for school, so that's awesome but it's one of those bigger items that you don't absolutely need so if you're just starting out you're just building your stash this is one of the things i would suggest you hold off on um i would suggest you get one if you can but it's not necessary it's one of those things that's really kind of just like a luxury to have in your craft space i guess most of our tools are because <laughs> crafting is uh totally not necessary um, and some people might argue that, but, uh, but yeah, this is one of the things I would hold off on. Um, so if you absolutely need it, I uh, totally recommend this brand. I purchased it at Walmart. It was, um, reasonable and, um, and it's been really good and easy to use. It's easy to figure out. So this is a good one to have from Walmart. All right, guys, moving on to die cutting machines. So if... <clears throat> I started uh, Happy Mail and doing swaps and things like that, Instagram about, next month will be two, two years. Um, so when I first started, I went to Tuesday morning and I had seen um, everybody doing die cuts. I didn't really know about die cutting machines. I didn't know about die cuts. I had just been introduced to it and I wanted a die cutting machine so badly. I didn't know how much it costs and I was buying like crazy. I was buying glues and papers and embellishments and all kinds of things. So it got to the point where I was spending way too much money. Um, 
and I tried to like slow it down. So anyway, when I came across this, I thought, oh my gosh, it's, you know, under $20. It's going to be an awesome die cutting machine. And then I get home and I find out it's an embossing machine. I didn't even know what an embossing machine was, but I did research, you know, I tried to see how I could use it. And I came across this account on YouTube called Coupons to Provide. And she had just uploaded a video where she discussed how you could use this um, as a die cutting machine. She did mention that it was, um, you know, it's not a die cutting machine. It could damage your dies. You could break them, especially because you're using those thin dies. This will only work on um, thinlets but she did show you show us how to do it and what she did is um, these are the cutting the plates that come with it and oh my gosh I used them so much they are so not pretty but anyway what she um, said you should do is pick up those chopping mats from Dollar Tree cut them down to the size of the plate create a sandwich that will fit through here with your dies and then run it through to cut you know to get your die cuts and so it was amazing when i found that video i was like oh my god i can use this as a die cutting machine it's so awesome and so what i would do is i found myself having to run it through and then run it back and feed it through several times for it to work um, and then these would warp a lot so I would have to buy new ones and cut them up and figure out that whole sandwich thing again um, <laughs> so this is so sentimental to me because of all of that hard work that I went through with this I wish somebody would have told me that die cutting machines aren't that um, expensive I mean it is a, a, a big purchase but if you save your money and you don't buy all those punch boards that you don't need you know it's a great um, tool to have in your craft space so anyway I used this for about a year guys as a die cutting machine and then one day I was at Joann's and so this is the Sizzix texture boutique and like I said it's an embossing it's an embossing machine um, but I was at Joann's one day and I saw that this die cutting machine was on sale um, and I hadn't done research on it. I didn't know how much these cost, but I want to say that this was a hundred and maybe like thirty dollars. I ended up getting it for like fifty-four dollars, and so it was on sale. And then we used a coupon at the register, so it was a great deal. So do your research, look around, use those coupons, look for sales, um, and yeah. And so it. <laughs> <laughs> after using this embossing machine and having to roll it you know back and forth and sometimes when you're rolling back the die moves so it cuts your die cut and you have to start all over again um, so yeah after doing and living through that I appreciate this machine so much this is one of again the most used um, machines or tools in my craft space I would totally recommend this one um, it's the Spellbinders Platinum it's not like the big shot so you can't use like the big um, dies through here but I haven't had a problem really with any of the dies that I use um, pretty much everything is fit in here um, and it, it's amazing to just be able to roll it through once and it cuts through the die you know you don't have to go forward and back and so yes definitely 100% recommend this tool this right here is my baby <laughs> this was gifted to me by my oldest son it is a brother sewing machine and he purchased this at Walmart I had the mint green we are memory keeper sewing machine it was so hard for me to figure out it had too many features on it I'm not an experienced sewer um, I had never really used a sewing machine prior and so it was just so frustrating and so difficult for me to use I ended up getting rid of that um, and so my son gifted me this one and when I say game changer wow it is so easy to use it has very few um, stitch options um, it has this tension tool right here it has the back forward um, right here of course the dial on the side it's very simple 
to thread. It is so easy to use. It is under $100 at Walmart. I totally recommend you investing in one of these. If you don't have a sewing machine, I would 100% recommend this one. Um, I absolutely love it. And it's lightweight, it's easy to move around. Um, it's not so big and bulky. I just, I absolutely love this. So these, this is one of the things I would, again, 100% recommend you investing in. Um, I also have a um, another thing that I recommend is having a good printer in your craft space. Um, I have the Canon Pixma. I picked that up at Best Buy, and it's great for printing ephemera and for printing pictures. Um, so I would definitely recommend doing your research, looking for a printer that suits your craft needs, and you know, investing in a good printer. And then um, finally, the last item I wanted to discuss with you is my Silhouette Cameo. That is, again, one of those things that I would 100% recommend investing in um, my crafts. Um, it is easy to use. It is something that I had to research again. I, it, it's not something that you can just open up the software and you're able to use and create and do things with it. You do have to research it. You do have to learn. But once you learn, it gets so much easier. I know I'm not using it to its full potential. I know that it could make so many more things <laughs> than what I'm using it for, but totally worth the money, totally worth the investment. You know, as you start building your stash and getting the, the smaller tools, the sewing machine, the printer, and the cutting machine are the final tools that I, you know, those are tools that can wait. Um, but definitely the ones I would recommend are this Brother sewing machine, the Canon Pixma uh, printer, and then the Silhouette Cameo. Um, I do have friends that have the Cricut. The only thing that I have heard that is better is the Design Store. Um, the Silhouette Design Store that has the SVG files, they say that carries way much more than the Cricut Design Store. I don't think Silhouette or Cricut, I don't think either one is better than the other. Um, I think that there's pros and cons to both. Um, I've only used the Silhouette Cameo and for me as a new crafter, it was easy for me to figure out after watching videos, of course, and reading up on it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would recommend the Silhouette Cameo just because I knew um, to crafting and it was easy to figure out. Um, and because of the design store. Um, but other than that, I don't really think it, there's a difference. Um, and so yeah, just make sure to do your research when investing in big tools like that for your craft space and find something that suits your craft needs um, and your style. And so with that, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're still here. Um, let me know if you're still here down in the comments and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.